must also understand that there are Ugandans today who earn 2 billion shillings in less than a week. One individual. So we though without the money from NSSF, do we still have the money? By a few people. So it's not that this money will come and cause inflation. It has a very minimal influence on the economy. And probably, let me first uh, explain, because we have not given people an opportunity to understand the mid-term access. Mid-term access to NSSF is a proposal that came over 20 years ago. It's just that sharp MPs who had looked into the position paper filed with the parliament by the trade unions wanted to use it as a political capital. During the COVID time, because their electorates were pushing them for handouts, and they imagined that since we were discussing this law of NSSF, where workers have saved money, then let us use this one. They did not know what they knew, but they had to understand or comprehend the fact that you couldn't access money without the law. They had not yet passed the law, but they were pushing NSSF to pay money to these, uh, I mean, to, to us, the members. When NSSF was also insisting, we don't have a law under which we can pay this money. So it is a proposal that came over 20 years ago. We wanted mid-term access. One of the other proposals that we had mooted is we wanted NSSF to start or create a bank for its members. Because we are funding banks within Uganda. DFC, DFCU uses NSSF money. Housing Finance Bank uses our money to operate. So we were saying, why don't we have our own bank as NSSF? So that the members can access loans at a reasonable or an agreeable interest. Since you are already a member, the owner of that money. But that didn't also work out. We also had a proposal that can our money be kept in terms of dollars? Be because in case of anything, if something happens and either uh, there is a devaluation of the currency, we end up losing a lot of money. So some people are thinking, why can't NSSF, since they are investing this money, even outside Uganda, even in Rwanda, we have investments there in neighboring countries using our money here. So some other workers were saying, can we have our money uh, kept in terms of dollars? Those were all proposals. And the position paper that we presented to Parliament had three reasons for which we, we, we needed mid-term access. One was mid-term access was meant for education purposes. Because there is, let me take my example. If I have 100 million, I'm assuming, I have 100 million with NSSF, I am 40 years, and I have lost employment. The old law was saying I can only access money at 50 years and after one year of no subscription as proof that I no longer earn a salary. Then at the 51st year, I can now access that money. If I am not working, you get. But I am having 100,000, I mean 100 million, and I have school going children for whom I cannot be able to pay their fees. So we said, under such circumstances, let us have mid term access to help and or support such members who are in such dilemma. The second reason was medical. Since in Uganda we don't have a, med a national medical or insurance scheme, we said, let us have mid-term access in terms of problems that are related to medical. You know, these days very many people have problems with the children, heart, kidney, and that operation or treatment is done in India, where they ask for 40 million. And there are people who have over 100 million, you look at your child dying because there is no mid-term access 
and you can't access all the other money that is there because you have not made edge. And the third reason we advanced for asking for midterm was housing. I have money with you, I've been working, and probably the company that has been employing me had given me a house. For one reason or the other, I ceased to be an employee with this company. And now I have to go home. I have no accommodation. I have no job. So under the circumstances, we also said such employees in such situations would be given midterm access to attend to their housing issues. The problem is now practice. When NSSF was just defeated, they didn't want midterm access. They wanted all the money on themselves so that they choose. You know, under the Ministry of uh, Finance, for them they think money, they work money, everything is about money. Investment, investment, they don't think about the individual owner, the individual owner's interest, it is their interest, finance. And that is why we were fighting all through to ensure that this money, this fund goes back to be administered by the ministry responsible for social security. That understands so, so the reason. Want, so you no longer want NSSF? You want your issues to be dealt by the ministry? No, no. Mm -hmm. NSSF is the organization, is the operational organization that manages the fund. Mm -hmm. However, the supervisor, the one who created the law in 1974, was the ministry responsible for gender and social development. It only went to Ministry of Finance because of the scrappers, MODs who had swindled money and they were interdicted and they were imprisoned. So they said, I think the ministry is not managing well. Let us divert it to Ministry of Finance to manage. When it went there, it also met a lot of problems than we even expected. So we have been all through fighting to put it back where it belongs. And that is where it is. And we are a little bit happy it is where in the Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development. And we have adequate numbers of, of representation or even on the board of the NSSF. So we are a little bit comfortable. Mm. So I wanted to conclude by saying one thing. Okay. Is, is yes, is that... Uh, this midterm access, it has started operations. By yesterday, they were recording over 9,000 members applying. Out of that, 4,000 rejected? No matter, because there must be criteria. Mm. Otherwise, with the same people, ourselves, we shall begin crying that my money was taken by my, by my twin brother. Mm. So when their yardstick set out, I must also tell you that we also participate in the process to make this law. Three weeks ago, we were doing a validation on the regulations of how people should access this money. Mm -hmm. The difference that you will see in the midterm access provision in the law, though uh, the way it is being pronounced is as if midterm access is the law itself. No, it is just one of the amendments that have been made. It is a requirement that one must have the NSSF number prov provided by card. You must also have your passport size photo for purposes of comparison with what is in the system. Mm -hmm. And you must have a bank account. Depending, if you are expecting your 20% to be less than or 3 million shillings lower, they can deposit this money directly to your mobile account, mobile money account, by on your phone. But if it, your 20% exceeds 3 million, then it will go on your bank account. So you must have a bank account as well. And, and lastly, you also need to have the national ID. It is a requirement. The only thing is we need to deal with the person who is delaying or refusing to issue Ugandans with national IDs. When sometimes we even see Sudanese holding our cards here. Then a Ugandan is moving every week, he can't get it. Okay.